Oh. Hello again! This is a review of Batman Under the Red Hood, the newest direct-to-DVD animation movie from Warner Brothers Animation. It's an honorable death. A warrior's death. I think I'll pass on the 72 virgins, thanks. This movie is, of course, about the, possibly the darkest chapter in Batman's history, namely the death of Jason Todd. Now, for those of you who don't know, who don't usually read Batman comics, Jason Todd is Batman's second Robin. He wasn't a very liked character. In fact, DC held a vote at some point in which it asked readers uh, to determine the fate of this character, whether he should survive or whether he should die uh, killed by Joker. And Batman fans, being the sadistic little bastards that they are, voted to kill off Jason Todd. A couple of years ago, the character was brought back to life, and this movie is about the immediate chain of events that took place right after Jason Todd was revived, and assumed the identity of Red Hood, which is also the first identity of the man who would later become the Joker. Let me start off by saying that yes, this is possibly the darkest uh, movie that uh, Warner Brothers Animation has released so far direct to DVD, out of uh, Green Lantern, First Flight, Wonder Woman, and all the others. That being said, it's not as dark and as violent as it could have been. I personally think they could have pushed the envelope a bit more. But what I liked most about Batman Under the Red Hood is that you really get the sense that this is more of a family drama that happens to involve, you know, supervillains and gangsters and stuff like that. I really think that the dramatic content is of high quality in this movie. Um, you can really feel the tension in the relationships between the characters. It is pretty faithful to the original comic book storyline, except for one major deviation. And that is the reason why Jason Todd was brought back to life. Now, in the comic books originally, um, at the time of Jason Todd's revival, Superboy Prime was throwing a hissy fit and he was punching holes in reality. Because of Superboy's, Superboy's prime eff uh, effect on reality, Jason Todd was brought back to life. Now, understandably, Warner Brothers Animation did not want, want to open that huge can of worms, and they kept the reason a lot more simple, and it actually ties really well into Batman mythology. Black Mask and Nightwing also show up in this movie, and it's great because they provide some much-needed much needed humor and levity, because the relationships between Batman, Joker, and Jason Todd are so tense and dramatic that you kind of need something to lighten your spirits a little bit. And it was very fun to watch Black Mask form because Red Hood is kind of coming after him and Black Mask is mostly paranoid. I, I, would, I would have thought of him as a more cool customer kind of villain, um, you know, just silent but deadly. But uh, actually he's kind of a paranoid mobster in this uh, movie and, he, and he's pretty fun to watch. In terms of voice acting, I really liked John DiMaggio as the Joker. I also liked the Joker's look in the movie. It kind of is reminiscent a little bit of Heath Ledger, but at the same time is pretty faithful to how animated Joker has been uh, designed so far. I also liked Bruce, Bruce Greenwood as Batman. I thought he was a lot better than Billy Baldwin was in uh, Justice League Crisis on Two Earths. Jensen Ackles of Supernatural fame lends his voice to Jason Todd. I thought he started out pretty poor, but uh, as the movie progressed, I, got, I guess I got more and more used to his voice, but he definitely isn't a voice actor. You can tell that they, um, they hired him mostly because he does have a distinctive voice, he just doesn't really know how to use it to express emotion. In terms of action sequences and fights, my personal favorite was the fight that opens up the movie, which is between Batman, Nightwing, and uh, Amazo the Android. Now, when this took place in the comic book storyline, most people had a problem with it because Amazo was defeated pretty easily. But I gotta say, this fight looked pretty awesome animated. My biggest problem with Batman Under the Red Hood is the music. This being an animation film, uh, the audience will not have the same empathy with the characters as in the case of a live action movie. So music is that much more important to deliver emotionality. And Batman has a long tradition in animation of having some awesome soundtracks. And in this case, some scenes fell really flat, either because the volume of the music was not high enough, or the music was just inappropriate to begin with. So in conclusion, you know, I liked the storyline when it was presented in the comic books, and I'm glad that I got to see it uh, brought to life, at least in the animated form. 
Um, I think it could have been a lot more dramatic and a lot. Uh, it could have went to some darker places. But all in all, it was an enjoyable animated movie. Um, and I just, I kind of wish that Warner Brothers Animation would not depend so much on Batman. They have so many good characters. Um, so yeah, let's bring on some lesser known superheroes. They, they gotta they got be more interesting than this.